Greetings and welcome to a new video about multiple input amplifier. We continue with our circuits using op amps. In this case, we will look at the circuits where we have three inputs and we will like to calculate the specific voltage and the currents for this circuit. Of course, we will look at their calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have the following circuit given. We have three sources, VA, VB and IP. The values are shown here, so 7 volts, 2 volts, and also 40 milliamps. We have 4 resistors, R1, R2, R3, and the load, RL. And we have the following questions. An op amp is again considered to be ideal. We like to know the load voltage, which is shown here, and also the current is actually oriented in this form. And the current delivered by the op amp, which is given here in this branch. Okay, let's look at the solutions. How do we work this out? Now, due to negative feedback, we know we have these two nodes that are equal to each other. So we have negative feedback. V plus is equal to V minus, and we can use that for our later analysis. Now, we have an ideal op amp. That means the input impedance of this op amp is then infinite in ideal condition. So the currents entering the op amps are all zero so i minus and i plus here in these branches must be zero so also we can use this information for our later analysis first one the load voltage vl now in this case we have three sources and the most straightforward way and also easy way to work this out is using the superposition principle again it can be done with mesh current method or the node voltage method it is also perfectly fine but i have chosen for this example specifically now the superposition principle that means the following the actual the total v load so the load voltage will be the load voltage due to va only plus the load voltage due to the vb only and plus the load voltage due to ip only so we have the partial effects we add them up and you get the load voltage that is the power of superposition you actually separate or divide a complex problem into small problems now we call this now equation one and i would like to refer that later we can now say the following activate one source at a time and then see what the result is for the load voltage i will start with the va and then go to vb and ip if I activate only VA, that means disable the rest of the uh, sources. A source which is a DC voltage source will be a short if it is inactive. And if it is a DC current source, it must be then open. It's also the same for the AC sources, by the way, but we only consider now DC analysis. So if I only activate VA, the two sources, VB and IP, will be disabled. That means this is a short and this is an open. And that condition is shown here. And only VA is then there in place. And load voltage is only due to VA. So this condition, the circuit here, is this part. So if I calculate here the VL, I only get the first part of the load voltage. I can also do that for the activation of the VB only. That means this source is now only there. This is shorted VB, I mean VA. And IP is still open. So we have now the second situation, and if I work this out, I will get a VL due to VB only. Now, the next one is the final one is only IP, the current source active. That means two voltage sources must be disabled. They are shorted because they are voltage sources. Oh, I have only IP. Again, the VL is now due to IP only. So we have now the third contribution for the total VL. Now, let's now calculate for each of this the uh, the value for the load voltage so first one let's recognize what we see here since the current flowing in this branch which is also shown here and also discussed here is zero that means the voltage drop across r3 is zero so we can consider this branch completely as a short and if i now look at the circuit again i can see a inverting amplifier configuration so the impl inverting amplifier template or the basic circuit is now visible with a VA as input and the VL for the VA as the contribution is the output. So we can use that formula. We can say VL due to VA only is minus R2 
2 over R1 times Va. That's the formula. So V back divided by the input resistance. And that will give you times the Va, the voltage here at load. Now let's substitute everything. 80 volts, I mean 80 ohms, 20 ohms. And then times minus 7, you will get minus 28 volts. That's due to the Va only, the effect at the output, the load. Now looking at this, what you see is the following. This is open, so we can only consider this part. But again, this in this branch, there will be no current flow because I plus is zero. So there will be no voltage drop across R3 because that is also the same current as I plus. So we only have VB here at this node. And if I look at this, it is a mirrored version of the non-inverting amplifier. So we have again our template circuit here. This is shorted, so it goes direct to the ground. So we see again a feedback resistor R2 and this resistor R1 goes from the inverting input to ground. And the formula for this one, for the non-inverting amplifier is VL due to VB is equal to one plus the feedback resistor divided by the resistor, this resistor going from the inverting to ground times the VB. Now we have everything we can just substitute the 2 volts for BV and 80 and 20 ohms for the resistors. And we have here plus 10 volts at the output. That is the contribution by VB only. In a similar form, we can look at this. This is a little bit different, but it is still a non-inverting amplifier. First, we need to recognize here the following. This current source will split its current in this direction and that direction. But this direction this I plus is zero, so all the current must flow in this R3 branch. So if I call this V plus again, this voltage at this node is then V uh, I P times R3. So let's first write down what we see. So V plus here, it will be applied again in a non-inverting input, it will be again and non-inverting amplifier configuration. Again, the same feedback and this resistor here. This is still shorted, so it is the same situation as the, for this case. For the second case, we have this expression, but we don't know the V plus yet. This IP will only flow in the R3. So we can say V plus is IP times R3 using Ohm's law. Now at this node, we have then this voltage, which is then 0 0.04, 40 milliamps times 100 for R3 will be exactly 4 volts. So we have at this node, 4 volts. Now we know this, then we can substitute this in this value in this expression. And then we have 1 plus 80 over 20 times 4, you will get exactly 20 volts. So the contribution now by IP at the output, the load voltage is 20 volts. Now we have everything. Now we can say, let's now collect all the separate contributions and get a total effect. So let's collect them. The VL due to VA, VL due to VB, and VL due to IP. All of them are shown here. And the formula is shown here for the load voltage as a superposition. Now if I now substitute everything, minus 28, plus 10, plus 20, that will give me exactly 2 volts. So this is the total effect and also the answer for question A. Now going to question B, which is the current delivered by the op-amp, for this case, I can again set up an equation there, so using node voltage analysis. If I say, now let's see, at node Y, I can say Kirchhoff current law at Y. Now we can say, let's then direct the current I2 from right to left, this is just a choice. Then we have the following expression. IOP, which is this op-amp output current, will be then the I load plus I2. So this will produce these two branches. Now we can again write each current using the voltage and the resistor using Ohm's law. So VL over RL is IL. VL minus V minus, or that is also possible, VL minus VA over R1 plus R2. Why? That is actually much easier because we don't know the minus V minus yet. And there is no current flow in here, so we can consider this actually as a total uh, series connection. So we can say that that is easier, VL minus VA divided by the R1 and R2 as a summation, that's shown here. That is I2. 
because i2 is equal to i1 if it is flowing from right to left for r1. Now let's then substitute the values. We know 2 volts from question A, 50 ohms for the load, 2 minus 7 for VA, and divided by 20 plus 80, that are R1 and R2. Now that will give us minus 10 milliamps. So we have also question B. So let's collect them and see what we have. Now we would like to, of course, verify these in the simulation result. This is the simulation circuit. You can see the R1. R2, R3, and the VA and VB and the V, I mean IP also, the current source and the two voltage sources. And there is a current arrow here in the branch for the output to measure the current of the output uh, node for the op amp and also the voltage at this node. You see minus 10 milliamps as calculated, you see a 2 volts at the load voltage as calculated. So this is R verified. You can also do, you get more information by generating a table of result in this circuit. So you can also see the node numbers. You can see here the 10, minus 10 milliamps, which is this branch. You can see here 2 volts, plus 2 volts VL at this. So this again pro pro proves using this table that our calculations are exactly correct. Now let's now jump to the simulator and also show you how you can generate this table and also how you can make up these values in the simulator. So let's now jump to SPICE and also discuss this circuit there. All right, we are now in the simulator. You can see the three sources, VA, VB and IP. And we have an ideal op-amp here. There's R1, R2, R3 and also load. This is the current arrow to measure the current in this branch. So you can get it from the meter. Again, click on it and this arrow. And this voltage pin here is to measure this voltage at this node. And you can get it also from the meters by clicking on this one, there's the voltage pin. So you can click on it and place it in any point you want to measure the voltage. Okay, now if I now say, let's now measure, the, determine the values for the IOP and a VL, we can do that using analysis, DC analysis and calculate node voltages. That means measure or display the results for the meters in your circuit in the simulator. Now you can see minus 10 milliamps and also 2 volts. So you see directly the results and that verifies our calculation. What you also can do using this pen is click on a component and determine its voltage and also its current. So it will be highlighted in a red. This also highlighted in red. This also, this also. So you can see that you can select a specific component using this analysis method. Now you can also generate a table. So we have also shown that. So analysis, DC analysis, going to the table of DC results. Here we go. That is shown here, so we get more information. So again, you can see the following here. IOP is minus 10 milliamps here, the first entry. And the VL here is two volts. As calculated but you can also click on it with a pen it will be highlighted here by the way or you can click on this see specific 40 milliamps and here 50 milliamps for this resistor so depending on what you prefer and what you like to measure you can do more you can also uh, make a plot if you prefer but that is of course not the question in place here so we have seen here by using this analysis directly that you get the values for the current at the output of the op-amp and also the voltage at the load node and that is also what we have calculated that is verified in our simulation all right guys this was our second example of an op-amp circuit with multiple inputs in this case a little bit complicated than the first example and we have used superposition to solve this problem and again you can do this also using other methods you can also check that for yourself and see that this is indeed correct. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share our videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.